you know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. Yeah. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. Welcome back, everyone. Here we are at episode 225 of the Massonomics Podcast. We are the lifting podcast about nothing, and my name is Tanner. And my name is Tommy. Tommy, this is the second time I've seen you actually today, which hasn't happened it much is. over uh, quarantine 2020. It has been rare, hasn't it? Yeah. We saw each other at the gym. Mm-hmm. Doing gym stuff. Yeah, the gym thing. So episode 225, we've got a guest again for this episode. We're kind of on a hot streak with the cool guest. 225, Tanner. That's halfway on the road to uh, 450. Oh, you know what that means. You know what it means. We don't have to say it. Oh, you yeah, just we, know don't, we don't have to say it. Yeah. <laughs> We're not going to say it either. Because there's something big when we get to mm-hmm. episode 450. <laughs> <laughs> there will be. <laughs> to, to go twice as long as this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Mm. But yes, uh, before we get into our, who our guest is and everything else we've got today, Let's hear about our sponsors. Let's. The, let show, us. the way, the reason we get to have a show today, even our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Hybrid Performance Method. They're your one stop shop for all things fitness and online coaching. Whether your goals are training related, nutrition, and body composition related, or both, Hybrid has a program for you. With dedicated and experienced coaches in each strength and fitness discipline, you can rest assured that you're in the best hands possible. Use our code MASS when you when you go to their site, M-A-S-S. That'll save you 5% off any training or nutrition membership for the life of your membership. And you know they're credible. They've been guests on the Massonomics podcast before, Steffi and Hayden. They've been vetted thoroughly. Yep. So we need not say more about them. This episode is brought to you also by Texas Power Bars. In 1980, all the way back in 1980, Buddy Cap set out on his own to make what he believed was the greatest bar he had ever seen and trained with. And the Texas Power Bar was born. It was strong as a house with the best knurling, and it was maintenance-free. Hundreds of state, national, international, and world powerlifting records and massonomics, most importantly, yeah, have been and continue to be set and broken on the Texas Power Bar. Visit texaspowerbars.com. This show is also brought to you by Lifting Large. Lifting Large has set a new standard for customer service within the strength world. They have live website chat support and speedy email responses. Lifting Large is home to the ground lock deadlift slipper, and they're always in stock and ready to ship. Massonomics listeners can save 20% on all Lifting Large branded products by using our discount th- code there. It's MASS20. Use that at checkout. And today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Spud Inc., the goal of Spud Ink Straps is to make products that support sports performance and help everyone achieve their training goals. They make products that last forever, will not bust your budget, and most importantly, leave no doubt about success when everything is on the line. Check them out online at spud-ink-straps.com. There's our sponsor team. Hell of a good team. Great team. Great team. So 225, we've got Alan Thrall coming up later. Mm-hmm. Fa- of famed YouTube success and gym ownership success, Yep, I would say. Hair and beard success. Hair and beard success. Uh, de- heavy metal success. Mm-hmm. Successful at a lot all, of stuff. All I the guess. things that matter. Yeah. Um, I, I, do, I watched a few Alan Thrall vi- YouTube videos this morning, to even get, just to, to get, get in, in the, the right state uh, of mind. To get the blood pump into all the right places. Yeah. <laughs> did you learn anything new and spectacular? He had a, what did he, he had a cool barbell cleaning video, and it was uh, actually, you know, the, the barbells with the, the little pinch um, yeah. rings at the end, the snap rings. Yes, there that, you go. that that are made with the snap rings, like the Rogue Ohio Power Bar, yeah. I believe, is does, made. Does the snap gym, ring. does Massonomics have any of those? I think the I think the Rogue Ohio. I think the Kabuki is a snap ring. Is it really? Yeah, I, I think can't it's a it snap in my head ring for some reason. And I think the Rogue is a snap ring. Okay, Texas Power Bars are not like that. Yeah, I know for sure they're not. Yeah. Um, but he actually took it off and took the sleeve all the way off and cleaned it. And have you showed. ever done that before? I never have. But it made after watching that, I was like, I should do that. I'm, I was thinking I would do it with. I, I think our Omni Oli bar yeah, is like that, yeah, and that I, would I make think sense. it'd be interesting to take that one apart and oil it up and see if it spins better because it's kind of an Oli bar to begin with. So, yeah. not that anyone, can, you know, actually we do it. We did have a member join up that wanted to look at all the bars and he um, wondered about anything we have for Olympic weightlifting, and he I showed him that one, and he was. That we, he, that a he was couple, a couple yeah. times a year, I see someone doing some type of clean yeah. and jerk or he, snatching. He was doing cleans in there a couple times. Okay. I was like, oh, we're really expanding our uh, <laughs> our. It's a very diverse footprint place down here. Yeah, yeah. right. 
Um, so I watched a few videos. Of they're they're pretty cool. But we'll talk more about that stuff we with will. Alan, I suppose. Yeah, we don't need to no. give all the spoilers. No, that's know. right. There wouldn't be anything to listen to I mean, in the what, last what half. What would we do right now? Just have to be open air, <laughs> waiting like, for well, the ads to come, you only guys to talk to Alan. already said everything interest about, interesting about Alan Thrall. There's nothing left to like ask him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm getting very thirsty, Tanner. Oh. So Good. We came to the right place then, the Massonomics Podcast. Is this uh, what's in the can segment? Where I this would... okay okay you know what this is going to be a what's in the can segment okay. actually okay okay so so no looking here. all right not looking and I mean, I'm, I'm just looking gonna, just I'm not just gonna can. jump right on into this okay are you just gonna dive in mm-hmm. is this fresh out of the oven almost almost mm. more scent than the Bud Light lime from last week mm-hmm. had to feel the pop top to make sure. What brand we're dealing clue. with. That I, is a clue. I immediately think it's a LaCroix. Do you notice anything about the temperature? It's kind of room temp. <laughs> <laughs> is this a room temperature? It is La- absolutely. LaCroix? Tanner, I'm okay. slowly uh, building you up to a hot, yeah, a hot LaCroix. Right, 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 right. I don't yeah. want to shock the system too right. much. This feels like a room temperature LaCroix. What flavor is it, though? I think that this is the flavor you know, maybe one of the more iconic flavors. I think this is Pomplemousse. Very good, too. Yeah. Your palate is yeah. really, really and to me, that, around. Do you think that Pomplemousse is the, what, not saying it's the best flavor or your favorite, but do you think it's the most iconic look? I La- feel like La- between flavor, the color flavor. of the can yeah. and the name of, like, if you were just new to this for the first time, you're seeing LaCroix and Pomplemousse on there. The whole thing is like, well, what the hell is this? Right. So it has to be one of the yeah. like OG the, LaCroix. This one embodies everything that LaCroix is, that sparkling water this, is this about. Is, don't you think? This is the brand right here. This yeah. is the brand in a can. It doesn't have to be your favorite flavor, Mm-mm. but you have to admit that it is. You have to give props. Yeah. Give credit where credit is due. This is the one that broke barriers for all the other flavors. Right, right. So did it I t- see. Tore down walls. On, uh, on, <laughs> in. <laughs> it was it in the story someone did post that they had a piping hot LaCroix in their car <laughs> yes and they drank it and who they were wearing it? lift I shorts do you um, who it was? I, f- I can't remember the, the follower's name it was that was just recently here yes that was it was a there. few days ago uh, it they, was a pretty good story yeah they uh had a piping hot LaCroix sitting in their car <laughs> they didn't, weren't intentionally <laughs> heating it was just sitting in their car right they said they threw their keys or their phone or something it hit it caused it to explode so he drank then, it. Yeah, then yeah. being the uh, the good person that they are, realized they couldn't let it go to waste. They said they shotgunned it to finish the rest of it. And uh, Now that's a history. fan. That is. that That's good stuff. That's a I, real fan. I actually laughed out loud reading that story. LOL'd. Mm-hmm. Most people, I don't know the st- statistics behind it, but most people are not laughing out loud when they say LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever I would get say that something feeling? like 99.99. Yeah. <laughs> Also, any <laughs> laughing emoji of any kind. Right. You're also not laughing it's then, like, yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> I found that mildly interesting. Yeah. Sometimes face. that's a cop out. Oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. That's okay. <laughs> sometimes it's not a cop out. Sometimes, sometimes, because I, I do a lot of commenting on the internet through yeah. as Massonomics, you know, we get tagged on a lot of th- things. Sometimes it's not a cop out, though. Sometimes it's just. I want to express that I well, like what you're saying yeah. here, but I don't really have anything to say. Well, you don't want to be so literal. Like, this really did please me to the point where I was laughing. Right, about. right, like, right. Like, okay, yes. yeah, you don't say that all. And, and I don't really have anything to add verbally, but I can just, you know, do the laughing emoji. And then it's like, yes, this is mm-hmm. this is good. We like this. Continue to do this more. Yeah, I, It's not necessarily laugh. I'm not sitting there laughing with tears coming out of my eyes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I kind of almost feel offended yeah. now, Tanner. Right, I'm rethinking yeah. a lot of our conversations. <laughs> Shouldn't be telling people this, really. But. <laughs> yeah. uh, spilled the beans. Massonomics was popping up in some places. Yeah, again. We always so, like to see Massonomics pop up in places. The first one that I like seeing is, uh, I think a few people had it on their stories that Hybrid was talking about our billboard right away. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I, The funniest part to me is, it was so it was Hayden and Steffi, they had a call with, or an interview with... Uh, um, Geo and... Uh, <sighs> The Barbell Brigade owners. <laughs> barbell Brigade. God, yeah. my brain is... Tanner, people might not know this, but we do these on Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday nights, I should say. Um, after a lot of working and the amount of running around I did today, my brain is like scrambled yeah, yeah. right now. Um, you just got to use this time to decompress a little bit. And, <laughs> this, is, this is my decompression yeah. time. This is my time where I'm like taking a load off here. I'm just relaxing. So yeah. 
I'm just I'm just offering the commentary, Tanner. I'm I'm relying on you to drive okay. the story forward right. here. So uh, that's a lot of pressure now. I <laughs> now I'm nervous. <laughs> but so they were. Uh, um, God, who did we just say again? Geo, that's the Barbell Brigade. Barbell yeah. Brigade. I keep yeah. wanting to say Barbell Shrugged. Yeah. Barbell Brigade. Okay. Yeah. God, so they're interviewing. A lot of different barbell things there out there. There is. I know there's too many. They're interviewing Barbell Brigade people. And uh, <laughs> Hayden goes, yeah, he said something about the Massonomics billboard. And he goes, and I know he's explained it to them. And he goes, yeah, it says something about like the top five lifting <laughs> podcasts about nothing in Northeast South Dakota. Yeah. And all I can think of is like, that entire thing went completely over their head. Like, but he did. Oh uh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He explained it, but I'm yeah. just like, if you came at, I mean, they live in California, they live in LA, I think. Right. And like to hear some, like talking about some lifting billboard, something about Northeast South Dakota, you can yeah, just yeah, tell yeah. Like, they were like, yeah, that didn't make any sense. To but them. the guy did, he did say like, cause then Hayden even said, he's like, you know, and it was just completely a spoof. Yeah. You know, yeah he kind of explained. Then, then and then he's like, Oh, that's why we would, because they were all agreeing that they want billboards. Yeah. So, you know, they're saying how expensive they are in California. I'm sure Miami, the same thing. Oh, they got to be nuts. But there. they agreed that's how they would want a billboard mm-hmm. to be because they had some ideas of their own where it's just ridiculous. Just dumb yeah, stuff. Yeah, right, right. Because mm-hmm. uh, being in this business, we, I mean, we talked about it at the time, a real billboard makes no sense. <laughs> a funny billboard <laughs> is great, it though. Make, you can actually makes, do something Yeah, like that. right, right. I don't think it's crazy to think that we got exposure or sold materials because of oh, no. sold merchandise because of our, our dumb billboard. Well, idea. and it gets hybrid performance yeah, and, yeah, and, and they brought barbell it up. brigade like, there's talking no about way. it. Yeah, there's yeah. no way if that thing was ever serious, that would have been discussed. I was a little hurt though, because Hayden asked you, do you, he said, do you know the mass, do you know about the mass mm-hmm. guys? And they, their answer was no. That was part of my whole thing in the equation of, okay, do you know who these guys are? No. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you about some guys that you don't know who they are that also have a podcast that are in Northeast South Dakota and it's a lifting podcast. Yeah. Like, the whole thing was, I'm yeah. sure like they got the concept of what right, it was. Right. Steffi sounded pretty jealous though. She did. They got, they got some high, they got that hybrid money. Like I'm sure they could buy a billboard if they wanted to They have like buildings completely painted with their, yeah. on the outside. I there. mean. We they have a sponsorship and I know we're sending people their way. That's so. right. They can afford it. <laughs> they they can definitely afford it. So we were on that podcast. We we're also on uh they're talking about it's on Let's Get Stupid podcast again. Mm-hmm. You know, talking about the expensive lift shorts. So it's people love the the lift short thing, you know. It's they never do. it's never gonna go away. I don't think it will. It's never gonna go away. Nor should it. No, no, God no. So those are the two that we popped up on. But I do like it when people keep us in the loop of just in case I Well, not it's easy to miss it. things, you know. Yeah, right, right. It's uh, it's hard to stay on top of everything right now. That's right. There's too much stuff. What else did we have here? I know we've got a sack segment. Could, are oh. we to that or? We actually probably should do the sack okay. because it actually ties. It's actually a, a decent segue with some of what we're talking okay, about. Okay, here, we so. don't get to do sack segments too often, so right. I get kind of excited when right. when that comes around. Um, we've who, we've got more coming too, if I remember. Oh yeah, we do have a more, more, because you put out we. To send us free shit. Right, like, right. So it doesn't, I mean, yeah. just send us shit. Like, we'll talk about it on the podcast. This one isn't directly related to that, but there's another one coming soon that is, that is I believe, okay, real specific okay. related to that. Yeah. So, but this one is more related to something else we were just talking about. Mm. And I believe this is your size. Very nice. And let's see here. This is, this is also your size. This would be the old, the old goodie package yeah, from Hybrid, huh? From Hybrid. And we've got a, I can't, you, you're, I think the shirt you were having had up was the same as yeah, this yeah, one. Yours is in gray, the, mine's in maroon. And it's, I think that's probably their kind of uh, OG logo, yeah, so to it's speak. Yeah, the shark with the barbell. You know, I've always thought we're in South Dakota. We could do the buffalo. We could do a buffalo yeah, with the barbell. I know you've we mentioned could, that before. Maybe now's the time for it to happen. That's strike while the iron's hot. And then this, I think we both have the same one here. Yep, the hybrid but, logo with the. With the big back. We also don't have a shirt like this where we do right. the left chest with the right. big full back. Right. Which maybe that needs to be on the list too. That could be too. We'll you just know, steal all I mean, their things. We, Tanner, we run the company. We could do whatever <laughs> we wanted here. We know some people. We've got connections. No, these are awesome. And they always they always got those primo tees. Yep. It's, yep. What color is this shirt? What'd you call it? I would call it like plum. Yeah. It's kind of purpley. But not quite, but I mean, a little more right. muted, but uh, no, these are both super nice tees. Yeah. These are both shirts that I would wear. Absolutely. Would uh, all, and as, as long as we're on that too, 
Have you noticed in the gym we got a, a quite quite a few new banners and flags and stuff hanging up? We do. So we got one from Hybrid. Supporting all the people yeah. that matter. We got a Hybrid one where it's the same shark barbell logo and it's like black and then not rainbowy color, like floral almost, mm-hmm. floral in it. And then we've got a Live Large banner hanging up. It's yep. a tiger. Uh, that, oh, that reminds me. I was going to say today, high, high, lifting, live I for real can't talk today. Yeah. I for real cannot talk. <laughs> live Large yep. launched a blue shirt today. Did you see mm. that? I did see that, now, which is fun. Yeah. Now, for 99.999% of that people, doesn't that mean doesn't much. mean anything. But the first year we ever went to the Arnold, we had our blue lift shirts on. And Nick of Live Large, the, Nick, owner. the owner of Live yeah. Large, he said, oh, you guys in your blue shirts, you can have them. He goes, like, I'll Live never Large make a will blue shirt. never have yeah. a blue shirt. It will never happen. And I don't know if we gave him a hard time about it. He's like, no, it's, yeah. it's not going to happen. We're not going to do a blue shirt. And we've talked about and, That's been a topic we, of yeah, discussion Yeah, we said it several the times. Because yeah. the first year we went to the Arnold with a booth, two years ago, we had a lot of blue shirts. Our booth was almost all blue shirts. And now he finally has a blue shirt. I wanted to comment on it, but... I don't think he runs the account now, and I was like, ah, oh, that joke would probably get lost on whoever is uh, right. whoever's doing it. But right. they have a blue shirt. They do. That is big news. <laughs> and they have a banner in Mass Lemmix. Yeah, and they have a, a banner. flag. Probably even bigger news. And then the other one was Hate Brand Goods. We have a Hate Brand Goods uh, flag that they were nice enough to, mm-hmm. to send us to that we got hung up in the gym there. It's a mm-hmm. cool one. I think it's hard to kill, something like that. Hated since forever, which I think was, a, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, you know, it's yeah. A, Thought that was kind of cool. I always think their designs are on point. Yeah, I mean all the companies are with, but I, yeah, I, I like I hate brand goods. They have a a nice aesthetic. Yeah, they do. And Matt's been on the show. We'll have to get Nick uh, from Live Large on the yes, show. Yes, we, we were talking he's about a that. But interesting businessman. He himself. is. He's got a lot so, going on. Yeah, he does. He's a cool guy too. I'd be I'd be curious to so hear support how. all those companies really. Mm-hmm. Not as much as you support us. For yeah. us more. For, first and foremost, just additionally like, support spend them. Spend all of your money yeah. on us and then some if more. If there's anything left, which and then, there probably yeah, isn't. Yeah, when there's like absolutely nothing else to give, then you can think about moving on to those other companies. Right, right. Yes, exactly. So that was our sack. A good sack segment. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, There were some big lifts this week, Tanner. Big lifts. I do like a and big lift or two. I don't know if you know, but there hasn't been a whole lot of big lift segments happening lately. Maybe try... Technically. Uh-oh. There we go. Is that good? Tweaking the mic. Yep. Um, Jamal Browner, I don't think this surprises anyone, really. I mean, it was just, he was going to do it at some point. It just was when. Right. Had a 1,003-pound sumo deadlift. And it and was really, really easy looking, <laughs> it right? It was. He did have straps on, so it wasn't like this. This wasn't done in oh, competition so he was or anything. cheating. Yeah. He was sumo and cheating straps. You know, it the whole thing barely counts, but I guess we'll, we'll still talk about it, you know? Yeah. Um, but no, super impressive lift. It did really look easy. You, and it, it's funny too. What I think about is how, especially with, you know, the strong men that deadlift over a thousand, it's like <laughs> yeah. such a, pre- and I, I mean, I don't blame them. Of course, like I'm saying he's the anomaly here, but normally for a thousand pound deadlift, it's such a production. It's like, like, well, the world stops turning like for this. Well, and on top know, of it, like, the guys that are doing that are mountains, six three yeah. minimum, yeah. three fifty minimum. He is just such an outlier in that group, and I think that's part of it. When I'm saying like it's so thick, like that's part of it. The the people doing it are enormous, uh-huh. like so that adds to it. But it just he, his is just so much different. It doesn't look the same. It doesn't look like the same well, sort it, of yeah, thing. It doesn't. It, oh. it is so different, and it just moves so fast too. <laughs> like that's the part that doesn't make any sense. So it's like snappy. It is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah snappy. Fast, easy, I don't know, <laughs> any word like that. Yeah. But it makes you wonder, I'm sure he's working grip. Like, he has to be working, like, hook grip and stuff like that, too. Yeah, that's the limiter for him, yeah, right? Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah. It's got to be. But it seems like his hook grip is coming around I a little so. bit. I think so. He's had some videos showing, uh, it looks like some pretty solid lifts with hook grips. So right. It'd be interesting to see, like, once meets start becoming more popular, are happening more again, like, is, is he going to try one this year, or is it... Uh, 2021 does he right. go for a high nine or is a thousand, a thousand out there as yeah, an option right, i don't know right. that's pretty crazy that'll be pretty crazy to see that one it, ha- it seems like it inevitable eventually that he's going to do a thousand in a meet i, I mean even if the it's way like a deadlift that, only meet, right, right right yeah which I, that would be totally cool i would love to see that yeah why not 
Yeah, it's got to be just be his grip. Obviously, he just did it in straps easily, so it is, <laughs> yeah, just yeah. His, it is just a grip. I suppose his positioning is allowed to be a little bit different in straps, so you could argue it's slightly more than grip because some people, the way they use straps, they can actually turn it into a little bit different. You, you know, can get give more yourself advan- an inch or two. Yeah, maybe more if advan- you, advantageous if really leverages. Yeah, yeah. But still. Uh, you wouldn't think at that level you'd be wanting to do that just because you know you got to come back to right, right. not have it. So like, now i got to go all the way back down bit. to 900 pounds. Yeah. Mm. Well, I, yeah, he's he's going to – I don't know how he couldn't be doing no. 900, well above 900 in a meet sometime right. in the next year. Uh, do we want to hear any podcast reviews for Ooh, this episode? We always want to hear podcast reviews. We're still trying to catch up from that huge uh, – surge we had on the road to well 200. part of it is all our fault i think for laying off the hype on it you know but all after all the excitement we're just so wore out well they're from. still coming in a little bit though we are still they? are not catching up you know okay. we're still not i haven't actually do you know what we're at yeah i think we're at, at uh 232 oh okay no. yeah, that's not so bad. we are getting up getting close <laughs> i think we we said before we got to get to at least 250 before we start to push the yeah i think we really said 260, 260. Is like it's playoff yeah. time now right, like right. We're, we're in this so we got a little ways to go especially mm-hmm. that's going to be without us making this huge push for it to get there but if you want to see the huge push for the road to 300 you've got to get to 260 first mm-hmm. we're creeping though okay first one and i'm having a hard time remembering which ones i've done but i believe these <laughs> are the next three on the list um this one is titled old um, numero uno, and it's from Old Bay Best Bay. Since the early days listening to Tyler talk about adventures in big man eating and bidets to crispy warm apple pie LaCroix, <laughs> this podcast has come a long way. Not sure why or where they're going, but they'll always be numero uno-ish in Northeast South Dakota. Very nice. Top five in Northeast South Dakota for yeah, sure. Yeah, top five. And this is the one we were discussing earlier, the most controversial review. The title was five stars, and it's from I Just Want to Deadlift Four Plates. And they gave us four out of five stars. Actually, we're not allowed to read the review, so that is I'm true. We did to... say it has to be yeah. five stars, yeah. Although it is a positive review. Well, we'll just say it's positive, but that is yeah. the rule. Yeah, that's the only that's... rule we've ever had for this. We don't want you need to I've... leave us a five star. If we review. break those rules, what yeah. are we? I mean, we're garbage. We have no morals yeah, at we're that point. Trash at that time. Um, next one <laughs> is titled Five Star Bench Press," and it's from Mount Rossmore. He said, took me a while to even figure out how to do this, but it's heavy bench day tomorrow. That's the most important thing. See you at the gym. That is from a gym member. I, say, I think we know who that, that is. That is a Massonomics gym member. <laughs> That's Mount Rossmore, obviously. Of course. So those are our reviews for today. And Alan was just texting me. He's still on. He's still on? Yes. Did he say, are you guys reading the reviews right now? <laughs> are you guys doing the review part? Yeah, Alan knows our <laughs> like our flow of the podcast. Like, <laughs> okay, if my math's correct, you're about 20 minutes in. Have you done the review part already? Uh, yeah. That's what he's saying. So that's where we're at for reviews. Yeah. God, what else do we got going on, Tanner? Oh, in the world of massonomics, we you know, got... It's interesting because <laughs> there's... Almost nothing lifting related happening in the world. And there hasn't been for, you know, with the exception of some of those world ultimate strongman things. Yeah. There's been like nothing lifting related. That seems a little over now. Uh, I I think it does. Like, because they were hyping those up for quite a while. And now it's been, has it been close to a month? And there hasn't, that's what I feel like. There hasn't even really been discussion of anything. Right. Um, Yeah. And like, there wasn't anything really big because there's not anything really big right before the Arnold because the Arnold's coming up. Right. So it's like, it's just, it's getting crazy that there hasn't been anything really lifting related with the exception of one or two small things here and there for almost the entire year now. Right. And we're past the the halfway point. The Thor deadlift and then Julius Maddox uh, bench attempt. And outside of that, like I see a lot of people training and talk about like, if they have to wear a mask in their gym or they don't have mm-hmm. to wear a mask in their gym, if their gym's open, if it's not like that's the most that I see, you know, I see that more than just about anything at this point. If I scroll down my feed, I see some of that talk and yeah, then just, just some training, like nothing, like not the most exciting parts of the lifting world. <laughs> it's not, right. it's not, but somehow we keep going. I don't know how we're doing this. Well, we got all these A-list guests to keep us rolling. I, thank, you got a good point there. Thank, good, we, we got thank God we switched to that format. Nothing but A-listers up yeah. in here. We do have some good A-listers. Alan, we were looking at, he has got like on his way towards a million YouTube subscribers. Yeah, that's, that's, that is a lot. That is a lot of YouTube subscribers. 
Because YouTube is not exactly the easiest thing to get people on. Not for us, at least. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the meme format doesn't work as well no, on YouTube no, for some no. reason. Maybe it's we just need to make like a slideshow, like <laughs> Slashonomics greatest meme hits of 2019, <laughs> and we'll go back and it'll just be like 10 seconds per meme. And I would like to watch that, actually. It would actually be best funny ones. to see how the content has we, changed. We've been time. having a lot of good video memes lately on Ma- on Massonomics. I think, I, that, as yeah. always, the, the Instagram page just never disappoints. It just oh, keeps... Been... I was going to tell you, actually... Because you did the you did two this week that I laughed at pretty hard. And both of the the two were first there was the dumb and dumber one. Yes. Of like, man, when are we gonna ever catch a break? <laughs> and like the bus of like the hot girls, but yeah. instead of the girls, it's, it's the, the sponsor. Spudding hybrid uh lifting. That one did and, make me laugh yeah. pretty hard. Yeah. Um <laughs> I, I did like that. I and, like that one too. I was excited. When I hit that one I hit hit me, I was like, <laughs> that has to be funny. I thought that was really funny. Yeah. Uh, Definitely helps if you listen to the podcast. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you don't listen. I'm, there's yeah. definitely people that saw that were like, who the hell is Tommy and Tanner? Like, <laughs> that just yeah, the follow the our page. page that, yeah. I mean, statistically, way more people saw that were like, what the hell is this about? Right. Which is, which is even funnier. Right. Uh, <laughs> and then the, the other one about the kind of the where are they now? <laughs> yeah, I, I was, thought that was, I was excited when I had that idea too. And I, and I was just like, how can I, like I, the idea hit me and I was like, there's got to be a way to do that. And then I was like, I'll just voice over the names of Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, at first, my internet was like not working right. I wasn't at home when I was watching that one. Uh huh. And so the first time I heard the voice, and then my phone paused, and I'm like, is this part of the video like a bad voice and a pause? Because right. I couldn't tell what the voice even said. Right. And then when it finally went and I heard the voices, I was, I was <laughs> laughing pretty hard at that one. Yeah. And, uh, Part of it is just funny because, I mean, it's so dumb. Yeah. You know, it's just <laughs> so stupid. But also it is yeah. like, yeah, a lot of those guys. Like, where did those guys go? Which no one wants to be in the lifting game forever. No. But like some of those guys, it is like, where did they go? Yeah, it's not that they quit. It's like they like literally they disappeared, disappeared from, yeah. from any, any. And I think that's what makes that a little bit funny too. Uh-huh. And then we had the one uh, you made with the Jerry Springer clip. Jerry uh, Springer people one. really like that. Like that guy. It's hard We're, not to like that that. <laughs> Clip, you like, betrayed yeah. me! <laughs> like everyone's just saying, "Oh, He's is this guy Batman?" Batman? Yeah. yeah, which did uh, I guess be on the lookout? Like we were saying, there has to be just a treasure trove of Jerry, Jerry Springer, Springer clips yeah, out there that right. that we haven't looked into yet. Yes, but uh, that could be a gold mine of. Of yeah. unharvested memes yeah. that enough people are. Well, when you have the per- the perfect clip like that, you almost it's like you could do whatever you yeah, want. With right, it. Like, right. I like, had like ten ideas yeah. before I threw that one at you because I was like, uh, no, the lift shorts they got their quota for the week. Yeah, Let's try right, something right, different right, here. Right. I haven't talked about someone having a bad back or something for a while, so yeah. Let's address. We'll that We'll do topic. that one. Yeah, right. <laughs> now stay stay tuned for more big hitting big hitter memes. That's that's what we do, man. That's what we do. That's what we do. Yep. Um, hmm. it's probably about time for advertisements. It's probably about that time. I love the advertisements. Let's do it. Today's show is brought to you by Lifting Large. Lifting Large sets the new standard for customer service within the strength world. Get email responses in hours, not days. They now have live website chat support available during the weekdays so you can get advice from a real power lifter with actual platform experience. The Lifting Large team wants to help you achieve new PRs in the gym and on the competition stage. When you're ready to try single ply and make your way to the dark side, give them a call. Lifting Large is home to the ground lock deadlift slipper and it's always in stock and always ready to ship. Massonomics listeners can save 20% on all Lifting Large branded products by using discount code MASS20 at checkout. That's M-A-S-S-2-0 to save 20% on all Lifting Large branded items. Place your orders at liftinglarge.com and you can follow them on Instagram at liftinglarge.com. That's at liftinglarge, D-O-T-C-O-M. The Massonomics Podcast is also brought to you by Spud Inc. and the Spud Inc. Strongman Harness. You may not be pulling a Viking ship like Brian Shaw or Eddie Hall on History Channel's The Strongest Man in History, something we've talked about on this show a few times, Uh, but this harness can still help you mere mortals with your sled and truck pulls. The Spud Inc. Strongman Harness is built from the toughest material available to pull the heaviest cars, trucks, and planes, and just remember... Uh, make sure you get picks or it didn't happen. With a lower pulling angle than most harnesses, the Strongman harness gives athletes better leverage and easier breathing. And with a crossed brace point on the backside, the harness stays exactly where you put it, no slipping ever. Tanner, I like that line, a crossed brace point on the backside. Mm. 
We should look into getting some crossed braces on the backside for our stuff. That's what she said. <laughs> the Strongman Harness is built to fit athletes of all sizes, from the novice strongman just starting out to the next World's Strongest Man contender. Check out the Strong, uh, the Spud Inc. Strongman Harness online at spud-inc-straps.com. Today's show is brought to you by Texas Power Bars. Buddy Caps first started lifting weights in the late 60s and began powerlifting in the mid-70s. At the time, he was working for Image Barbell, building gym equipment. Around 1976, a local machine shop started making Olympic bars for them, calling it the Image Bar. In 1977, Image Barbell became Champion Barbell. It was then that Buddy started looking at the bars with an intent of changing them for the better. In 1979, Buddy bought his first lathe to begin addressing the known issues. In 1980, his passion, drive, and purpose now had a greater mission. Buddy set out on his own to make what he believed was the greatest bar he had ever seen and trained with, and the Texas Power Bar was born. It was strong as a house with the best knurling and was maintenance-free. Hundreds of state, national, international, massonomics, and world powerlifting records have been and continue to be set and broken on the Texas Power Bar. To learn more about Texas Power Bars and buy one of their legendary bars, visit TexasPowerBars.com. And last but not least, this episode of the Ma- of yeah the Massonomics Podcast. This is still the Massonomics Podcast, right, Tanner? Uh, let me, uh, yep. Okay. Yep, okay. Right, good. Yeah. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if we changed halfway. Uh, <laughs> not, brought, not this time. It's brought to you by Hybrid Performance Method. If you've been training without a coach and have been looking for a competitive edge. Remember to check out hybridperformancemethod.com. Hybrid has 15 different strength and fitness programs covering everything from powerlifting and strongman to gymnastics and general fitness, all included in one training membership. That's not all. Hybrid also offers one-on-one personalized nutrition coaching that uses lifestyle habits and a flexible approach to shape your nutrition plan around your current lifestyle instead of turning your lifestyle upside down in order to support unsustainable habits that only work in the short run the way most programs do. If you're ready to take your training, nutrition, or both to the next level, use code MASS in all caps, that's M-A-S-S, for 5% off membership to all programs for the life of your membership. Great. Thank you to our sponsors. Let's call Alan. Uh, is this using your long distance minutes, Tanner? Oh, shit. We might have to tell him we got to cut Let's it call short. collect. <laughs> You accept a collect call from <laughs> Massonomics. <laughs> no, we'll pipe in the uh, uh, Gino. Yeah. <laughs> Will you call, <laughs> accept a collect call from Massonomics? Mas- yeah. Ma- Ma- Massonomics. Uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> dude, you're calling. Col- oh, no, no, that's dude, you're getting a Dell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More 90s stuff. Hello. Hello, is this Big Allen? This is him. Big Alan, we're calling to let you know we're really impressed with your uh, social media presence and we're interested if you would uh, like to become a uh, Herbstrong ambassador with us. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> All right. I'm already a yeah, consumer of your product. You uh, bet. All right, great. We'll send you a couple green sports bras and then, you know, just do your thing from there. <laughs> oh, excellent. Well, this call went really good, Tanner. I think we can wrap it up. <laughs> That's it. Thanks <laughs> Thanks for taking the time. Uh, we'll give you a f- uh, 5% for every jar of cream that you sell from here on out oh that'll be easy enough uh, <laughs> no uh alan we're, we're excited to have you on the massonomics podcast um we, we've got a, a, a few different things we want to talk to you about and at the end we want to play our overrated underrated game with you we've got a few uh special alan thrall topics but first of all <laughs> first of all i guess we should probably I'll, I'll give you a, our 10 second speech of what we know about you and then we can you can correct us and fill in the blanks for where we're maybe wrong or not getting the whole picture you run on tame strength out of Sacramento, California strength gym there. Pretty cool stuff going on there. You've got a, um, long running YouTube channel where I don't know, probably you've been at it for a better part, better part of the last decade and up to three quarters of a million, um, subscribers on there. You've got a really impressive hair beard into some metal music. How did we do on the summary? That was perfect. I think the only thing that can be added is that, uh, I am, uh, recently a strong dad. Oh, so ooh. I like to add that to my title. Now I am a father. Like, like how recently are we talking here? Uh, he's a year and a half. Year and a half. Okay. So, so, t- Tanner, so not only a gym, gym father, but a real father. Yeah. That's awesome. Tanner's been a dad for a while now. I am a, now a dad of six weeks. So, uh, a couple. Oh man. Nice. <laughs> so we're, we're just going to do some, uh, like, did you prepare your dad jokes then? That's the important question. 
I don't, I don't need to prepare anything. It usually comes natural. <laughs> right. Perfect. That's, <laughs> that's what I asked Tommy when his baby was coming. Like, you know, you're, you're going to get the handbook with the, uh, Nike air. Mo- it comes with a complimentary pair of Nike air monarchs. You now mow the lawn with a push mower and you know, you memorize like the seven dad jokes. <laughs> yeah. And I cut the sleeves off my, uh, three quarter sleeves on my sweatshirts on my hoodies. Ah, yes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's all key. <laughs> No, well, that's that's cool. So, so you're telling us you also have a life outside of all uh, your work and your hobbies, then too. You have a, yes. a family life. Right? Yes, I do. Oh, that's an important. That's an important fact. <laughs> that I is guess, a too. good thing. A lot of people yeah. like to overlook that part of it. Yeah, I'm not just in here uh, deadlifting all day. Yeah. Um. So, so I guess the first thing I was wondering, you know, I covered the as far as on tame strength. You've got that gym, and you've expanded multiple times there, and then you've got the YouTube channel with the very big following. I wondered, I don't know exactly how to ask this. You can probably take it and run with it, but which is, uh, as far as a business or your life, which of those two is a bigger part of your business? If you could only say, if you could only have one of them, which is not a real scenario, which, which would you go with? It'd be the gym. Yeah. I'm a gym owner first. Okay. YouTuber second. Uh, I make the YouTube channel for the gym. So, uh, yeah, in a heartbeat, if I had to get rid of one, it would be the YouTube channel and I'd continue with the gym. I think that the YouTube channel probably will only last so long. I don't know if I'm going to be making YouTube videos when I'm 60 years old and right. I don't know if YouTube will be around. <laughs> uh, but I do plan on being in the gym, you know, until I'm 80 years old, the old gym owner. So, uh, so gym owner first. I see you're playing the long game on this one. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, that kind of throws a wrench in our gears. We were kind of planning on podcasting until we're 60 talking, <laughs> doing the same thing. So now I guess we're screwed. That's apparently not going to work. So we got to rethink this whole strategy. Yeah. We'll have to group together after this one, Tanner. Right. Uh, but so the gym, and I, I figured that was, that was maybe kind of your, kind of your answer on that. Um, with on tame strength, this, another question kind of building off that, that I'm curious about, we, we have our own little club massonomics gym and, we have, you know, we have members that aren't even really aware that massonomics is something besides a gym. You know, you know, they kind of get it that it's maybe something else, but they really don't care about that. They're just in it for the gym. They like the atmosphere and the gym that we have there, and that that's what they're about. They don't care about any of the rest of it. Do you have people, for as big as your presence is and your YouTube channel is, do you have people that come to the gym that almost aren't aware that you have a YouTube channel? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, there are people who, who will, uh, you know, be members for quite a while and then they'll, they'll just approach me and say, Hey, you know, I recently found, you know, it was on YouTube and I saw, you know, a thumbnail of a YouTube video and you were in it and I clicked on it. Like, Oh, this guy's got a YouTube video or he's in a YouTube video. And then they're, you know, and I found the whole channel. Um, so they let me know, you know, months after, um, it, there's a, there's actually quite a few people who come to the gym not knowing that I have a YouTube channel because I feel like if they were really following it, they would have already joined. Um, but it's, it's more of, uh, the YouTube channel helps with finding the gym and like SEO, uh, in Google. So if, if anyone's typing anything in the area, barbell, powerlifting, strongman that they're interested in anywhere, you know, in Northern California or Sacramento, uh, the first thing that pops up is, one of my YouTube videos or my YouTube channel. And so they really just find it that way. And they say, Oh, this guy's in Sacramento. And then they come, they come here having never watched a video beforehand. Uh, so I think that's how the, the channel helps most, but yeah, there are quite a few people who, who are here who don't know that I, I have uh, YouTube videos. And even I try to record videos early in the morning when not many people are here, but even some newer members just kind of look at me like, what in the hell is he is he doing with that camera? Just not knowing that I'm making videos, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that is a funny concept. Like thinking about that, like, cause you do have a big presence. So right. to, to know, know, and it makes sense, but the fact that people can be kind of oblivious to that, it's just, it's funny to think about. Yeah. 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 There's, there's quite a few people, uh, even, you know, when I meet people and I just talk to them about what they're looking for or how they heard about the gym or why they're here. Um, and, and I usually ask, you know, Hey, do you have an Instagram? I like to follow all the members and the amount of people who are, who don't have Instagram who come to the gym, I don't have Instagram. I don't really use social media. They're not on YouTube. They don't, you know, watch YouTube videos. So there are, there are quite a few people who, who come in, uh, just to lift weights and not to, uh, you know, come here for, because it's untamed strength or, or to, 
anything like that. So that's yeah. kind of refreshing, honestly. Yeah, yeah it, it, it is. She <laughs> wants to come in here and just lift so, and just appreciates the gym. Uh, you know, rather than like, oh, you know, I've been wanting to come to this place for a long time, you know, but just people that actually want to just come to a gym and train is, is cool. How does that work though? Because if they don't have Instagram and they train, what of that counts? I know, really. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, I'd be completely lost there. Like, of like, like your program is really for? missing something here, yeah. pal. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, what about the flip side of that? So you could have members come in that don't, like you said, don't know about you from YouTube. Do you go out very often and maybe even outside of Sacramento or within and get recognized by people? Like how often does that come up that you're like, holy crap, it's Alan Thrall, like where you get treat, treated like a, a celebrity at, 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 to some level? Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't think I really ever get treated like a celebrity, but people do notice me mainly just because I have the hair and beard and so I'm hard to miss. Uh, and I think that a lot of people – stare at me in public anyways just because of the, the hair and beard right. not because they've seen me on youtube but a lot of times it's it's just pretty cool dudes who are like just give me a nod and they're you know they're like love the videos dude right. uh yeah, so just cool. stuff like that which is which is cool um there are every once in a while uh you know people that people that really just make a big deal about it are you are 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 you alan for all <laughs> you know <laughs> And, you know, I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, but, but, uh, usually if I'm leaving, if I'm traveling, I'm usually going for lifting related things. Like I'll do go to the barbell medicine seminars or whatnot. Right. And so, you know, I'm going to another gym to host a lifting seminar. So I'm going to meet a bunch of people there who are watching the video. So that's kind of like self-selecting where I'm yeah, going, but right, sometimes, right. you know, like randomly at, at Walmart or a restaurant, someone will say something. Um, but they're usually pretty cool about it. Like, Hey dude, like the videos. So, or, or I will, uh, what the, I think what, what makes me smile every time I hear it. And I don't even, sometimes I don't even acknowledge it. I don't even turn, but I'll hear someone in the distance. If we're somewhere busy, a shopping mall or something, I'll hear a distant trade on 10. And, uh, yeah. I, I won't even look for it. I'll just like <laughs> kind of smile. Like, yeah. That's cool. All right. Yeah. Uh, this guy gets it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a, uh, we were, I think I was with Omar Isaf. We were, uh, we were at like a, yeah, we were at a, uh, <laughs> hanging out with some celebrities. Uh, <laughs> I was with, uh, I was with him. We were at, I think a restaurant. We were eating on a, at a patio outdoors and, uh, some guy just flying by on his bike. Like, in, like there's traffic going. He's like flying down the, uh, crosswalk and he just yells and he can see me from that far away <laughs> try it on 10 he's just flying by on his bike yeah so, that's that cool. stuff's funny <laughs> yeah that's cool uh what uh, this is a two-part question and you probably answered this somewhere else i hate to ask questions that everyone's asking but i just want to know the answer what is your favorite video you've ever made that you put out on youtube and do you have a least favorite or do you have any videos that you put out and you'd almost like to take them down because they make you cringe, but they, they get a lot of traffic. And so you decide to keep them up. These are very good questions. <laughs> um, so my favorite, a couple of my favorite videos, I'm going to actually, I have my computer here, so I, want, I don't want to mess the, the name up, but a couple of my favorite videos are actually ones that uh, don't have a ton of views Okay. and uh, they're not that popular. It was more of like a creative video right. that I just had fun making. Um, and I think my favorite one is weightlifting, making a weightlifting platform or something. I'll pull it up right now. Uh, building a weightlifting platform. I think that one, uh, is my favorite video. Um, just cause I had a lot of fun making it, but it has, there's, it's just me building a weightlifting platform and like putting a logo on it. Yep. Um, but that's gotta be my favorite video. Uh, and then as far as, as far as videos I don't like, yeah, sure. I watch a lot of my really old videos. Oh, if I'm, if I'm doing some sort of recap on a recent video and I need old footage, I'll, I'll go find uh, search through old videos. And a lot of them, I, I do cringe when I watch just cause the, the information is just kind of like, you know, outdated um, or just the, I'm just, I'm just much different on camera now than I was then. Just, I was very rigid, you know, like I, I would just, you know, like I'm thinking to myself, loosen up, Alan, just what, <laughs> yeah. in my old videos. Um, and so just, I just, uh, I see that and I think like, 
you know, uh, I kind of cringe, but I'm not, it's not enough to delete the videos. I have deleted this. I don't think this question has ever been asked on, on any sort of, uh, podcast. Oh, so this good. is good, but I, Sweet. <laughs> I have deleted three videos. Uh, and the, the, the main reason for deleting those three videos was because, uh, I think the information was just so bad and so misleading and they were still getting lots of views. So, so all three of those videos had well over a million views each. Yeah. Um, and so there was like a little bit of like, oh man, I got, I got to delete it. Uh, but you know, whatever I, I still did. Um, and they were, so the first two actually went together. It was, uh, it was about back pain and it was something like why you have back pain. And it was talked about anterior po- uh, pelvic tilt and posterior pelvic tilt. And, uh, it was just a lot of like made up bro science in that video that I thought was right at the time Mm -hmm. and just explaining why, why you're experiencing back pain and and what you want to avoid doing and what you want to start doing. And, uh, that video was really old, probably five years old. Uh, but it was still getting a lot of traffic and I would get emails about that video and they would ask me questions and I would give an an answer to their question on the email that contradicted what I said in the video, uh, just because I know better now. Right. And, uh, and so I was like, I need to, this is such bad information. Like I need to, I need to take it down. It's uh, not representing me very well. And I'm fielding all these questions and like correcting it. Or they're like, Hey, this and this and this, you said in the video, this, what do you think? And I'm like, no, 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 don't just ignore that guy. Uh, so <laughs> I, I just deleted the video. Um, and then the, the, so th- that was a two part video. So those were the two videos I deleted. The next one was, um, it was the starting strength rebuttal. That was what the video was titled. And it was where, uh, uh, Jordan shallow had made, he's the, I think he's the muscle doc on Instagram. Okay. And, uh, he had made a video at the time I was a starting strength coach and he had made a video, uh, kind of, uh, talking bad about starting strength and saying that their cues are bad and this and that. So I made like this rebuttal video kind of like, teasing him. Um, and, uh, I think that a lot, it was, it was, uh, I think it was just immature on my part looking back on it. Uh, and there was, anyways, I, I had saw, seen a recent, uh, picture. This was like two years after that video. And I saw a picture of him. It was actually with Omar, him and Omar. And I looked at the comments and all the comments were like, Alan Thrall roasted this dude. This dude's <laughs> yeah. a fucking idiot. I remember Alan Thrall roasting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I was just like, God dang, man. I was like, these people are really taking this video too <laughs> people seriously. People never forget. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And uh, and I just felt bad for the guy because I'm because I'm like, this was just a dumb, like, immature video of me, you know, like making fun of him. Uh, so so I uh, I deleted the video and I actually reached out to him and told him, Hey, man, sorry you're having to deal with this. Uh, you know, and, and we talked over and talked about it, but it was just a, a bad taste. Uh, so I deleted that video. So those are the three videos I deleted. But as far as like old videos that aren't the greatest information, that's fine. I'm going to leave that. It, but it's just if it's really bad information, uh, I'll delete it. So, yeah, that makes sense. It's it's tough for someone like you. I think everyone that's a training or a lifter or a coach over the period of five or six years everyone, if, if you're decent at what you're doing, you're going to learn a lot and what you think you well, know is going to change. It would almost be weird if your opinions <laughs> and views on things didn't change a little bit over that time. Right, but it's just for you, all of that is documented and in magnified. endless videos <laughs> on YouTube that people continue to watch. So it's just, it's just, uh, it's different for for you being in the, under the, under that scrutiny that other people aren't. Yeah, I, kn- I know that people tend to click on videos the more recent they are. Uh, people are less likely to click on a video that's, you know, four or five years old. Well, your beard wasn't long enough. Yeah, really. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You'd be surprised how many people do click on older videos. Uh, I get, uh, on, on YouTube analytics. Um, it'll show, you know, like my, I don't look at it often, but I'll tune in every once in a while and I'll say like my top viewed videos and in the top 10 is, is videos I made years ago. And I'm like, people still find this video somehow. Um, and there's even, uh, people commenting, like a huge list of comments from people commenting on videos that are five or six years old. I'm like, nobody's like tuning into it. Like, why do you think the, 
the person who uploaded is going to see this or something. I don't know. But people, there's still traffic going to those old videos. Yeah. It is surprising though. Like I know on, on my YouTube feed, like occasionally a video will pop up from a channel I follow. And I was like, oh, this seems kind of off topic. And then you look and it was uploaded two and a half years ago. So like the algorithm is always doing weird stuff too, as far as recommending. And, and I think that all it takes is like a few people to leave a few comments. And then it's like that video is right back to life, you know? Yeah, right. It's getting some traffic. So YouTube starts right, you know, sending right, them back right. to the top. That makes sense. You mentioned uh, former starting strength coach. Um, full disclosure, we have been guests on Starting Strength Radio with Mark. Are you and Rip still tight, or are you not on speaking terms? No, we. I haven't. I haven't uh, <laughs> talked. I haven't talked to him. <laughs> I was a starting strength coach, but I didn't talk to him much right. before then. Um, and it, it wasn't that I really left on. Is it because you guys were? Terms. Is it because you guys just texted all the time instead? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If you know Rip, you know, he doesn't, <laughs> <laughs> will not text. And then yeah, I get, uh, I the couple of times that I did speak with him, it was it was always on the phone, almost like he doesn't want any sort of paper trail of things that he says. <laughs> but it's just it's just an email that says, "Call me." Yep. Yep. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm thinking, like, why didn't you just call me? But he, has my number, <laughs> but he just sends me an email that says, "Call me." You know. Yeah, we but, lived uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yep. Uh, and then I. Uh, yeah. Anyways, but, uh, but no, we, I have not, uh, talked to them since I was a coach. Okay. But it, it was, it, and again, it wasn't anything uh, on, uh, you know, it wasn't a, like a bad breakup. I was just, <laughs> uh, it was the time when, when barbell medicine was a part of starting strength. Right. And they were clashing kind of as two companies, uh, kind of a conflict of interest. And then they kind of, they just decided to split and it was like, hey, Alan, are you going to be a starting strength coach or a barbell medicine coach? And I just went with barbell medicine. Right. Yeah. If I so re- that was it. Remember back, we actually had a uh, Massonomics versus with you versus um, Alan Thick. Yeah. And yeah. The, one of the lines was, I can't remember the what the what the criteria was, but it, the answer was starting strength. We had to cross that out with a red <laughs> X and write bar- barbell medicine instead. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, another thing, really important question I had, the don't curl in me flag that you have above your rack back there. Do you feel like members are, you know, is that increasing awareness? Is it, is it causing less curling in that particular rack or are you seeing more of it like in a defiance thing? Yeah. I'm not sure who responded to the Instagram message I sent, but I, uh, I, there was one guy curling with the J hooks on the outside Yes, Uh, and he was curling right in front of that rack. And uh, he was like, well, I'm on the outside, so is that okay? You know, I'm like, I don't know. I'll see what the guys say. Walking uh, a very fine line yeah, there. There's some, gr- like, people do a really good job of trying to find all these gray areas for us here. That, uh, you know, it's, we, have to make some, we have to make some difficult decisions sometimes. I, I can uh, honestly say that flag has received, I've received <laughs> more comments on that flag than anything else on the wall and probably any piece of equipment at the gym. Yeah. That's for <laughs> just the flag. I think, uh, I think a lot of people just see it. Even when I'm giving a tour of the gym, they they'll point to it and they'll, they'll chuckle. Yeah. Or they'll be like, awesome flag. Oh, that's great. Uh, or there are a lot of people who, who look at the flag and they don't, they don't understand, you know, the origin of it. And, right. and they'll look at it and go, what does that even mean? Yeah. Uh, right, yeah. Right. So, but yeah, a lot of comments on that flag. Yeah, good. So that's what we like to hear. Yeah, that's exactly. It's it's working then. Ah, <laughs> uh, Tommy. Unless you think otherwise, I wondered about playing overrated, underrated here. Well, with Alan. one one oh, more quick ahead. question for you. You recently went through a bit of a, oh, yeah, a weight transformation. Right. Can, can you tell us a little bit about just the what was the drive for that and what the process was like for you? Yeah, I think the the main thing was. Um, Previously, for for years, I had always wanted to be bigger and heavier. I was eating a whole bunch, um, never missed a meal, always trying to gain weight. And uh, when I had my son, I knew that my training schedule was kind of going to get, uh, you know, go all over the place. Um, and so my training became really limited. I was, you know, you guys know, I was at home a lot um, and I wasn't able to train optimally. And so uh, I just kind of realized like quickly, like, why am I still stuffing my face, uh, and eating all this food as if my training was, you know, these long three hour sessions when I'm just running in the gym doing a quick 30 minute workout and, and getting out. 
Um, and so I was like, I, maybe I shouldn't focus so much on worrying so much about eating and gaining weight if my training uh, is suffering, if I'm not training as much as I used to. And so that kind of started it with like, hey, I don't think I need to eat as much. Um, but I also just had a, a moment uh, of clarity when I was uh, shirtless, looked in the mirror, and I just thought for a second, you look like shit. <laughs> and, uh, so then, so then I, the, both of those things was like, Hey, I think it's time to, to lose some weight. Um, and I also kind of realized and reminded myself that I'm not going to be 250, 255 pounds, you know, eating thousands and thousands of calories every day for the rest of my life. Like right. eventually I'm going to have to stop that, um, and kind of prioritize health. <laughs> and, uh, and so I, uh, so I just said, why not, you know, why not do it now? when I had my son, I think this is a good time. And so I took a year to, to drop, uh, quite a bit of weight. Um, and, uh, so yeah, that was, that was the main reason kind of, you know, partially, uh, health related. I thought that I looked like shit and that, you know, uh, for the first four or five months of, uh, being a dad, I just wasn't able to get to the gym as much and train. And so all those things just got me to decide that I should lose some weight. So what did you go from and what are you at now? 250 to 200, 200. right now. And, yeah, I and got uh, from January to December in 2019, I went 250 to 215. And then uh, I just kind of almost by accident over the past uh, few months dropped down to 200, which is lighter than I uh, want to be. And I'm not going to lose any more weight. But I find that it was it was actually somewhat easy for me uh, to, to lose weight. I think it's easier for me to lose weight than gain weight because I'm, I can stay pretty busy throughout the day. If I'm here at the gym, it's a warehouse. Sacramento is hundred degrees. There's no AC. So I'm sweating all day running around. Um, and so it's pretty easy for me to lose weight if I stay busy, stay active and I don't have to worry about like, Oh, you know, it's been three hours. I need to go eat a meal. So, uh, it's actually fairly easy for me to, to stay lighter. Yeah. And I think that, uh, becoming a, a first time father thing is, you know, I'm, I'm a huge, I love the gym just as much as anyone. We have our own obviously and all that. Um, but I think some, t- you know, from conversations I've had with other people that, uh, were going to be a first time father or hadn't yet, or were, were thinking about it, like it's easy to underestimate how much of your time that's going to take. And also not like, in, I'm not saying that in a bad way that it's going to take up your time, but like you want it to take up your time. And like, it is kind of like the most important thing going on in your life, more important than the gym. But it's just like, I, I run into that sometimes where people uh, want to, you know, think like, oh, that's not going to, that's not going to change me. You know, I'll still be here for five hours every day. And, you know, but that it is significant. That is a huge thing. Yeah, absolutely. Priorities, priorities shift a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's just not getting my, you know, three hour squat bench deadlift session in and, you know, is just not nearly as important to me. Right. Especially when my son was first born. So, uh, and, and not only for my son, but just to help, just to be back home to help my wife out, you know, it's right. yep. selfish of me to, <laughs> right. yeah, that's to be right. sitting and taking like <laughs> seven minute rest periods in between my squats. <laughs> yeah, so I down. have to go do this. I mean, it's fun, but I have to do it and yeah. it's going to take three hours or more. So just you're gonna <laughs> yeah. deal with this, honey. Um, yeah. do you ever see yourself? So you, you did say maybe even now you're a little lighter than what you want to be. Do you see yourself? Maybe you don't know yet, but could you, picture a scenario in the future where you want to make a significant push towards gaining more weight again for any reason? I don't know. I think I just, I had done it for so long, uh, that I just, I know that I'm not going to be world strongest man. Uh, and I know that with my frame, I'll never be, uh, a super heavyweight, you know, like you're, uh, there are guys in this gym that are 320 pounds who look pretty good. They're just, but they're just monsters naturally, you know? And like, I would always look at that as like, well, he's 320. I should be 322, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, at, you know, as I'm like approaching like 255, 260, just fat and out of shape. Um, <laughs> I just, I realized like, maybe, maybe I don't need to, you know, reach for that 300 pound body weight goal. Um, I don't know. Never say never, but, uh, I, I, uh, I find that in strongman, which is what I enjoy competing most. And that's yeah. the only reason I would try to 
adjust my weight would be to be competitive and strongman. And, uh, there are so many weight classes now that there is a, there are lightweight strongman 105 or 231 class. Yep. And I'm at, I'm at 200, 205. So I could like fill out that class and do well there, but I don't need to, you know, fulfill the 308 plus class. Uh, <laughs> right. So I feel All like I could, beats. I could gain a little bit of weight, but and if I wanted to be competitive locally or maybe even like just go compete at nationals, I could do that at a, without being, you know, obese. Right. Right. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's all cool. Um, Alan, we do want to play our overrated, underrated game with you. You did say you're you're on board with that? Yes, absolutely. Okay, great. This is kind of the best part of the show. This is what people stick around for, so just to <laughs> so, let you know. So don't disappoint anyone here. <laughs> so I'm just saying overrated, underrated, and uh, are we going to uh, uh, stop and discuss anything? or just? Yeah, yeah you, you, we, the word we use is druthers. So, Alan, today you have your complete and full druthers on uh, answer. <laughs> you, you do have to pick overrated or underrated. That's a key point. You can't ride the line, even though you might want to on some of these topics. You have to come to a conclusion of overrated or underrated, but you can elaborate as much as you want. Uh, explain why your answer is the way it is and how you came to it. That's a, that's all fair game for sure. And these were handpicked by us for you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. So there's a little love sprinkled on yeah. it. Uh, what, I'll tell you the one we're not going to use is Titan Fitness because I, I do keep an eye on your videos uh, fairly frequently. And I already think I know your answer to that. So we won't do Titan fitness. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Okay. I would have to end the call there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So topic number one, overrated or underrated man buns. Overrated. Overrated. Okay. So I got, I got, I, I, explain. Am, I am a fellow man with long hair. I need yeah. to, I need to get your thoughts on the man bun. I think that, uh, a man bun is only acceptable if it's a top knot. Really? Like a sumo That's, wrestler top oh, knot. Oh, like up here. Okay. Yeah. But I don't think the, I think the man bun worn as a fashion statement is just not something I can get into. Uh, ponytail is cool because it's functional. It gets your hair out of the way. But a, a man bun, I just don't, I feel like it's a fashion statement. It's just not for me. Do you ever feel like though with the ponytail that your hair is still not out of the way? No, it, uh, no, not really. Oh, see, what do I you mean, feel like never... your, what is yours right now, Tommy? I, I don't mean, even I, know. I, I don't totally have, have a man bun in, That's, but is that a man bun? Well, my hair is so thick and curly right. and crazy that maybe it just seems different, but yeah. I always put it in like this kind of low back man bun, but it kind of almost looks like a ponytail. Yeah. Maybe. I was going to say it looks more like a ponytail. I would say, I don't know, but I had to start doing that because the, the ponytail was getting too long. It was like in the way on stuff. That's just me. Yeah. Though. Yeah, I'm, I maybe just wear it higher. I don't know. <laughs> that could um, be it. Okay. Yeah, I usually wear my ponytail pretty high. Not that I have anything wrong with it, but if I had to pick one, I'd say overrated. Okay. I don't judge guys. With <laughs> well, I, th- I think you've judged Look already. Yeah. Guy. <laughs> Throwing your judgment around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Topic number two, overrated or underrated, Slayer. Underrated. Uh, when looking at uh, mainstream... I would say they're underrated. If you are a metalhead, if you appreciate metal, I think they get the credit they deserve. Uh, but uh, just general population, you know, who likes rock and roll, the stuff they play on the local radio station, I would say Slayer is definitely underrated because they don't appreciate it. Do you think it has become like, have you, uh, maybe, have you noticed this? Has it been surprising how many people start to wear Slayer shirts in the last few years? <laughs> I haven't really noticed. Really? But I feel I, like that has become trendy to wear a Slayer shirt lately. Yeah, maybe. Uh, may, yeah, I'm assuming it's just the same as, uh, uh, you know, wearing a Metallica shirt. It's just right. like a Metallica cool or like, shirt. Or like a Thrasher skateboarding magazine t-shirt. You know, yeah. it's like all that stuff. I think it all fits into that same category. Yeah, yeah. So what's, what's your favorite metal band? Favorite metal band is Metallica. I have to give that answer first, just because I have the longest history with Metallica. Favorite just, Metallica album? Mm, Master of Puppets. And then Kill Them All, then Ride the Lightning, in that order. All right. Very good. Um, yeah, that's my answer. Okay. I'd like many, but I think that I've listened to more Metallica than any other band. Yeah. All right, topic number three, overrated or underrated? Tacky, Atlas Stone Tacky. Overrated. 
because it is any competition you go to more often than not, people are using more tacky than they should be, especially mm. usually what, what usually happens is at a competition, the novice class will go first. So the first timers will go first and then everyone past that. Uh, and by the time you get to, usually you don't use the same stones, but sometimes you do. And by the time you get to the stone, it's so covered in tacky that it just defeats the purpose of using tacky because now there's this layer of goo uh, and it just gets everywhere. It's it's very much like, you know, chalk at a powerlifting meet. Like yeah. Rubbing it all over your back and just taking handfuls of it and LeBron James poofing it in yeah. the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People use, they use tacky the same way. Um, and especially if the competition is in summertime, yeah, it's it outdoors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just need a little bit to tack your hands up. You don't right. need this drippy gooey mess. Um, <laughs> but isn't that so part of the spirit of it? If a little is good, <laughs> yeah, then really. you just got to go all out for this thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at, uh, uh, Tom Stolman, who's yeah. a world record stone loader, mm-hmm. he, I, I see when he's going up to his, the stone, not only is he just wearing shorts and like a pair of chucks, he's not, he doesn't right. wear a belt, doesn't wear sleeve, like the, uh, the forearm sleeves or anything. He just, he goes up there, lifts and just some shorts. And he, uh, I noticed that he, he grabs the stone and in, in some of his videos, grabs the stone and adjusts it. And it doesn't look like his hands are sticking to it much at all. Um, and when he was done, he actually gave, and on one of the lifting, stone lifting videos on its Instagram gave his brother a high five and it was just a clean high five. <laughs> so I'm just looking at things like that. Like this dude's not even like, I'm sure he's using tacky, but he's just hardly using any. Right. Um, and so, but what does he so really yeah, know actually, about yeah, it? It's like, Oh, so you think you're the best in the world and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. I guess we just have to do what he does. <laughs> yeah. There is something, something about that perfect amount of tacky, like just enough on your fingertips or something. Then when you grab the stone and it just has that locked in feel without feeling like your hands are just like running with tacky. Um, Yeah. I, I hosted a competition and uh, this one guy who had never used tacky before just loads it up, just covers himself (laughs) in tacky. And uh, he went to load a stone. He went to load the stone, missed the crossbar and it, fell back down on his side but he was still stuck to it oh. it, it went all the way yeah. down the stone hit the ground it was on rubber mats hit the ground bounced up and smashed him in the chin and his chin split open like a pair of butt cheeks and it just po- immediately just poured blood all over the stone uh and he was like stuck to the stone like oh trying to figure out what was going on i'm like wow yeah it was just a train wreck uh just... yeah too much tactic can work against you yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, last one here, overrated or underrated, the Marine PT shorts. Oh, man. <laughs> I know I have to give you a straight answer, but it depends on who who <laughs> you're asking. So I'll say that uh, I, think, I think they're underrated. I think that they are they're very comfortable. I think they look great, but they have to be silkies. Right, silkies, so there have, you go. Yeah. They have uh, Marine Corps green shorts and you can get a big pair of shorts. Uh, and so they're like, you know, just above knee height, but silkies are the, the ones you're thinking of. Yes. The yes. tiny little ones. Right. Uh, silkies, I would say are underrated. Uh, okay. With that said, I'm not going to wear my silkies in the gym, at least when there's people here, <laughs> uh, because they're not that supportive. Do, do they have uh, a that, liner in them? They do have a liner. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I was in the but, Ar- army and I had army PT shorts and I always thought the Marine ones looked way better than our, the, I don't know <laughs> if you've ever had a pair of the, the black army PT shorts and they had a liner in them. They almost feel like swim trunks. They are not much different than swim trunks. They are not comfortable. Yeah. No, I mean, these are, these are, uh, they're comfortable just to, to wear around, but they're, they're not great for, uh, actually doing physical training <laughs> right. um, when you're around Iron, a bunch of other Irony. Marines, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, but, uh, wearing them at like a public gym, is probably not a good idea. <laughs> the, the liner is the same material as the out, the outer part. And so it's just, I don't know. I don't know if it's like nylon or I don't know, but it's just see-through. It's not very like the, <laughs> the, uh, the, the band that goes around your legs is not tight at all. So it's just, uh, yeah. Um, but they're they're very comfortable, and uh, you can run much faster with those than uh, normal shorts. 
performance enhancing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> performance enhancing shorts. Yeah. <laughs> we know a thing or two about performance we, enhancing shorts over do. here too. So we practically wrote the book on it. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, all right. That's great news, Alan. That wraps up overrated, underrated. You passed. So, oh, yes. <laughs> it's a, I know it's a relief. Uh, and that also kind of brings us the, to the end of our, our interview with you. I'd say we appreciate you having you on. And, and next time you're in Aberdeen, South Dakota, just look us up. <laughs> yeah, don't be shy next time. Yeah. Just. <laughs> yeah, why not? My best friend lives in uh, North Dakota. So, ah, uh, there you go. Maybe that's, I'll be over in that area. That's just one he Dakota away. On, yeah <laughs> he works on an oil rig yep. so yeah go figure but yep. uh anyways yeah maybe maybe sometime yeah uh is there anything that you you have to say i know you uh, have a uh, your work with P- pioneer still is that correct you had a code there i believe is there anything like that that you yeah. wanted to get out there yeah i work uh alongside pioneer untamed 10 one zero is the discount code um, and then I do work with Barbell Medicine. Their stuff is, the code is untamed. Um, and then the gym, like you said, is in Sacramento, California. Uh, you can come train here for all your powerlifting and strongman needs. Hopefully once gyms kind of figure out what they're doing, mm-hmm. California is a mess right now. But uh, but yeah, anyone listening who's in the area, uh, the website's trainuntamed.com. And my Instagram is untamed strength. Awesome. And don't forget about that Herb Strong, new Herb Strong affiliate code. Too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. We the, appreciate I can't it. Even, yeah, of course. I can't even remember my the discount code I gave on my uh, recent video. Uh, anyways, all yeah. right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That was good. That hey. was uh, Those questions were much more entertaining than most podcasts I'm on. Hey, that's uh, great. We like to hear that. Woo. We appreciate it's it. Usually, it's usually, so why did you start a gym? And it's like, all right. It's going to talk for 45 minutes about this. Yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah, it was good questions. It was fun. Awesome. Good. Yeah. So we passed too. It's a win, win, yeah. both sides. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Stay, yeah. Hold on the line for a customer, uh, yeah, evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> 10 point survey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah really? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> all, right, all right. Perfect. Hey, thanks a lot, Alan. All right. Thanks guys. See ya. See ya. Cool, cool beans, beans. Cool beans. Cool. You know that video? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, what movie is that from? Um, Hot Rod. <laughs> cool beans. Cool. Is that in the movie? Or yeah, is that just in, a, is no, that that's just in the a, movie. It's uh, in the movie, okay. actually. Yeah, cool, where that. he goes, well, I know he says cool beans, yeah, but no, is when it, it turns into like a 30 second skit. <laughs> that's, like, that's not that, just a YouTube no, thing. No, that's that whole movie. Where it's like a, like, cool, yeah. cool, cool beans, cool, beans. Yeah, that's that whole movie. They just dumb skits over and over that make no goddamn sense. That's why it is a really awesome movie. That's classic. It's a good movie. I like that movie a lot. I'm got, we've never dis- we've have we ever said that cool beans thing on the podcast in no. 225 episodes? Don't think so. That's the that's why we keep going. Like we there's always something. Like we come to these things. Just that, the deeper depths of our mind. Yeah. Cool beans was that spot today. Cool cool beans. beans. <laughs> uh, Alan was pretty cool beans. Yeah. So, yeah. Very cool beans. That was fun. <laughs> cool cool beans. <laughs> um. What do we got any of our stuff to talk about or do we wrap this? Should have new up? shirts coming out oh, any day now. We promised that last week. I know. Well, we didn't still, promise it. We no, said we, we said they're coming, but yeah. really for real any day yeah. now. Uh, God, I hope so. Otherwise we're going to have to fold <laughs> want, this thing up. I want those damn shirts. <laughs> <laughs> there are cool shirts and yeah. we want them. There are shirts. We want them now. <laughs> yes. Um, hmm. That's the main thing. Though, That's for it. Us. Yeah. We got those shirts and the podcast supporting membership. We still, we're still going to keep pushing that at you. We're not going to stop. Big James is still the only one up there hitting hitting grand slams off the top with all all uh, all four plans, but mm-hmm. you could join him. Um, the sponsors, though. Today's show was brought to you by Hybrid Performance Method. They're your one-stop shop for all things fitness and online coaching, whether your goals are training-related, nutrition and body composition-related, or both. Hybrid has a program for you. With dedicated and experienced coaches in each strength and fitness, fitness discipline, you can rest assured that you're in the best hands possible. Use our code MASS, M-A-S-S, in all caps, for 5% off any training or nutrition memberships for the life of your membership. This episode is also brought to you by Texas Power Bars. In 1980, Buddy Cap set out on his own to make what he believed was the greatest bar he had ever seen and trained with, and the Texas Power Bar was born. It was strong as a house with the best knurling and was maintenance-free. Hundreds of state, national, international, massonomics, and world powerlifting records have been and continue to be set and broken on the Texas Power Bar. To learn more about Texas Power Bars and buy one, is at texaspowerbars.com. Today's show is also brought to you by Lifting Large. Lifting Large has set a new standard for customer service within the strength world. 
They have live website chat support and speedy email responses. Lifting Large is home with the ground lock deadlift slipper, and they're always in stock and ready to ship. Massonomics listeners can save 20% on all Lifting Large branded products by using our discount code MASS20 at checkout. And today's episode is also brought to you by Spud Inc. The goal of Spud Inc. Straps is to make products that support sports performance and help everyone achieve their training goals. They make products that last forever, won't bust your budget, and most importantly, leave no doubt about success when everything is on the line. Check them out online at spud inc straps Dot com. Those are our four sponsors. If you notice, it's kind of always those four sponsors. It's because they're four great companies, and we're a decent company. So we just all keep working together and doing this thing. If you don't see broke, us, if it ain't broke, don't you don't fix see it. us switching switching sponsors every episode because we don't need to. No, they're they're just good. They're just damn good companies. So go out, go out and support them. Tommy, where do they find you? On you can Instagram? find me at Tomahawk underscore D. And you can follow me at Tanner underscore Baird. But more importantly, make sure to follow the official Massonomics Instagram at Massonomics. See you.